Greetings in Christ. I'm Pastor John Fritz of Hope Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Aurora, Illinois, and I'd like to welcome you to our worship service for this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost in the year of our Lord, 2023. The theme for our service and sermon this morning is God's plan in God's time yields God's results. We begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first song this morning is Above All. Let us confess our sins in the sure and confident hope that our Lord not only sees all our sins from his vantage point, but that he foresaw them all before the creation of the world, knew the awful price of our redemption, and is eager to absolve us for Christ's sake. Follow along silently. Dear God, since the fall, humanity became physically mortal and spiritually dead. 
Jesus descended from heaven to earth to be the way, the truth, and the life for all who repent and receive him by faith. We confess to you all our sins and failures, those known to us and those of which we are not conscious, but which have not gone unnoticed by you. Forgive us all our sins for Christ's sake. Clothe us in his righteousness. Empower us to pray for the good news to reach all nations and to use our time, talents, and treasures to reach our family, extended family, friends, those near and dear, and ultimately all people, even our enemies. Amen. God looked through time and saw our desperate condition as his lost children. With fatherly divine mercy and compassion, he devised a plan to reach us with the good news and worked through disciples, space, time, and the means of grace to plant the gospel of Jesus Christ in our hearts and gift us with a faith that receives it. On the basis of this, your confession in the stead of and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We respond to God's absolution of our sins by joining and singing God of Grace. Please join with me as we speak verses 1 through 16 of Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes, and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent, for he will give 
command to his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The Old Testament lesson for today is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 7 through 13, from the New King James Version, for this lesson only. O Lord, you induced me, and I was persuaded. You are stronger than I, and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. For when I spoke, I cried out, I shouted violence and plunder, because the word of the Lord was made to me a reproach and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. For I heard many mocking fear on every side. Report, they say, and we will report it. All my acquaintances watched for my stumbling, saying, Perhaps he can be induced. Then we will prevail against him, and we will take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, awesome one. Therefore my persecutors will stumble and will not prevail. They will be greatly ashamed, for they will not prosper. Their everlasting confusion will never be forgotten. But, O oh, Lord of hosts, you who test the righteous and see the mind and heart, let me see your vengeance on them, for I have pleaded my cause before you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the poor from the hand of evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 6, verses 12 through 23. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you were once slaves of sin and have now become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel lesson is Matthew chapter 10, verse 5, and verses 21 through 33. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, 
Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be shown. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please join me as we praise God and sing, Draw Us to You. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this morning we rejoice that God's plan in God's time yields God's results. Even if you are not somehow experiencing life in the lap of luxury, even if you are feeling some of the aches and pains of 80 plus year old Jeremiah tossed down a cistern because of his role as a prophet of Christ, speaking God's truth and fulfilling his part in God's plan of salvation. Even if you are a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, warned by him in our gospel lesson today that we should not expect any better treatment from the world than our Lord and Master and Teacher received, we can rejoice that we know the ultimate end is victory, not because of what we have done, but because of what God has done for us in Christ Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life, who has all authority in heaven and on earth. 
and who calls us to follow him. In the very dark days of World War II, there were secret projects all around the world, both those by the Allies and also those by the Axis powers. They were all rushing to try to develop a super weapon, and many of us have heard of the Manhattan Project and sadly know of the horrible and horrifying results of atomic weaponry being used in warfare. We probably aren't all as familiar with the Proximity Fuse Project, but it's been argued by some that it actually was more important in bringing an end to World War II than the Manhattan Project, but we'll let historians debate that as long as they like. In both of those projects, they were considered of such top secret importance that they were subdivided into small pieces so that those involved in the project and the work would not be able to see the full and complete picture so that if they were overheard by spies or tortured, they would not be able to divulge too much of what could be a war-changing and strategic invention. With Adam and Eve's fall into sin and the awful mortal inheritance that they passed on to the entire human race, God spoke a word immediately way back in Genesis chapter 3 the proto-euangelion, or the very first gospel, that the seed of the woman would come and crush the head of the serpent. And from that moment on, God made clear in increasing revelation and increasingly burdensome calls upon his chosen people to share that good news. And as we get to the New Testament, the Old Testament in which the promised Messiah was partially and we might even say haltingly revealed as God's people were able to receive, digest, and then share the good news of the promised Messiah. In the New Testament, we see very fully that Jesus is the promised Messiah who was to come. But we also see that burden that the Old Testament prophets had, and which is so clear in today's lesson from Jeremiah, this burning message from the Lord that he must share, a message that even the people of God need to repent and that they need to trust that God knows what he's doing, even if it will lead to lamentation, great sadness, and deprivation as God's people are hauled out of the promised land and physically forced to suffer in the land of Babylon. Jeremiah was tormented by people who did not like his message. And we know that Jeremiah grasped that the Messiah was to come, but like the Old Testament prophets, he could look to the horizon and not know which part of the plan of God's salvation message he was really fulfilling. He didn't know how soon, if it was going to be happening in his lifetime or way out in the future, but he did have a message from the Lord. And in spite of great personal risk and torment, he tried to remain faithful to share that burdensome message of God's word. The Old Testament law says repent. 
you need to be saved by the Messiah. The New Testament law says repent. You cannot save yourself. You need to trust in the promised Messiah who has come. And how did people treat him? Well, Jesus was openly opposed by many of the religious leaders of his time. He was mocked and scorned and crucified in our place. And he warned that we should expect similar treatment. In the Gospel lesson for today, we see Jesus sending out the twelve on an early mission. And what does he say? He says, do not go to the Gentiles. Do not go to the Samaritans. Is this proof that Jesus was somehow prejudiced against us non-Jews and against the Samaritans? Absolutely not. Just as Jeremiah and Isaiah and the other prophets before him were trying to be faithful to the plan of God's salvation that he laid out according to his own wisdom and his own timing, Jesus wasn't afraid of suffering, dying, and rising again. And yet, things had to be done in accordance with God's plan. The people of Israel were saved from slavery in Egypt. They were led to the brink of the Promised Land, and they said, no, nah, we don't really want to enter it yet. And the Lord was incredibly patient with them and even their gross outbursts of sin in the wilderness. And the Lord kept calling them and pointing them, calling them to repent and pointing them to the Messiah in whose person and work and mission and ministry, their repentance and their faith would be acceptable as the Holy Spirit planted the seeds of faith in the promised Messiah to come. You and I are not physical sons of Abraham, and so we wouldn't fit into the Old Testament plan as children descended of Father Abraham. And yet we have the opportunity to become spiritual children of Abraham, just as the Old Testament people of Israel were to be a light unto the Gentiles and the glory of God's gracious, merciful plan of salvation. You and I have been called by descendants of descendants of descendants of descendants of faithful Jews and faithful Gentiles who were reached in God's plan of salvation, in God's good and gracious timing, sharing his word, calling people to repent, and sharing his good news of Christ crucified, risen and ascended, and busily working all things to those who love him, that same Christ who has all authority on heaven and on earth at exactly the right time would be sending his disciples out, not saying the words of Matthew chapter 10, which we have as our gospel, which is only go to the children of Israel because they were to be called first in God's economy and God's timing and God's plan. And yet they were not to be the only ones called just as Jesus refused to allow himself to be thrown off the cliff at Nazareth because that didn't fit in God's timing, he, at exactly the right time, submitted himself to the kangaroo court of the Jews and the buffoonish governor, Pilate, who had no idea what truth was and who, frankly, didn't really seem to care as long as he could live in luxury. You and I don't always know 
where we fit in God's plan, but we do know that he cared enough about us to send Old Testament prophets, New Testament evangelists, and preachers, and teachers, and disciples to convey God's word of law and gospel to us in a language that we could understand that's crossed miles and centuries. And we follow Jesus' pattern where he, according to God's plan of salvation, sent this small group out to the Jews to have them be a light to the Gentiles, and then later would equip the larger group of disciples to disciple all the world with the good news, to reach even sinners like us, so from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the various ends of the earth, our Lord calls and sends and warns disciples that discipleship has a cost. You and I are called by the gospel. Christ wants us to busy ourselves locally, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the very ends of the earth even, so we start local. Pray for your families. Pray for your families every single day. Pray for your extended families. Pray for those whom you love beyond your family. Pray for those with whom you have influence. And pray that the Lord would use you beyond just your prayers, but that you could be an instrument of his peace, that you could, like Jeremiah, what does he say? His word was in my heart like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. May God increase your faith and my faith so that we see people, even those whom we might consider our enemies, as those for whom Christ died, that we might pray for them, that we might try local, regional, national, international ministries to reach the entire world with the good news of Jesus. And that we should trust the Lord in his grace and his mercy who can save such a worm as I can even when we don't see results in as timely a manner or fashion as we would prefer trust that the Lord's word never returns to him void, but that it does accomplish the purpose for which he sent it. God's plan in God's time yields God's result, whether we can see that result immediately or not. And we thank and praise him for the results that he's worked in our lives. We hear his word of warning that we shouldn't expect better treatment than what Jesus the Messiah who has come received. And yet we have the word from him that we should not just go to the Jews, but as disciples of Christ go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even the ends of the earth, discipling all those whom God has called we share the gospel with reckless abandon and leave the results up to our Lord and Savior because he is the only one who can convert anyone. And that gives us the peace of God which is beyond all human understanding, guarding and keeping our hearts and minds in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray. Dear Lord of heaven and earth, like Jeremiah and the prophets of old, the first disciples and the evangelists and martyrs, we are not called to wealth, comfort, and ease, but to serve as busy, living, and active participants in the Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and ends of the earth project to share your good news. Forgive our carefree unconcern about the eternal destiny of others, and renew our zeal for your mission and ministry. 
thank you for reaching us through the efforts of all believers who've gone before us. Make us all good stewards of your grace. Lead us to faithfully pray and act for the eternal good of our families, friends, all whom we love and even our enemies. Stop the wars, famine, illnesses, murders, injustice, and bold-faced depravity plaguing our land and our world. Help the people of Haiti and those around the world suffering from natural and man-made disasters. Be with those we name in our hearts who need your healing, support, and encouragement. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. Our closing song today is All My Days.